again in my video. Boom! Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land! Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer! Oh Hello, my. Boring Review Nation! <laughs> Hello, Born Review Nation, Gabe, Nick, and we're here today to review The Legend of Bhagat Singh. I'm super, super excited about that, but before we get into it, I just got to go on a mini rant as usual, okay? You guys see the jersey on. It is the last day of the NFL draft, and my Giants have had a mitigated disaster of a draft. It was insane. Nick, I'm going to send you a picture. I want you to clip here. But supposedly, this is how David Gettleman, the Giants GM, was drafting. He's by himself, but he has masks on and everything. There, there's a story that I read about that. He had someone over doing some um, technical work on his computer so he can get set up. And supposedly he was doing social distancing while the guy was working. You just didn't see him in the camera. But, yeah, I, I saw that live, and I'm like, why is he putting the mask on before? Dude, but I was uh, – That was hilarious. Could the Giants just punt anymore, man? You know what? It's so bad. It's so bad what they did this draft. And then, you know, it's so funny, though, because you saw all the Giants fans there to boo their picks, and at least they were a Giants fan. I kind of felt bad for Chargers fans, though, because I said – I sent you the picture, right? Don't At the NFL start. draft, every time they went to a team drafting, they would show, like, multiple screens of all their fans. They didn't find enough Chargers fans. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I have an argument for that one, too, because I, I did notice that, and I was like, oh, come on. They, they drafted <laughs> six. I paid attention to every team after that. Guess what? Every <laughs> team did not have enough fans. I think it was technical issues. I think they had, like, 16 or 20, whatever it was, and then some of the – the go back and watch the first round. You'll see every team has at least two or three fans that are missing. So I'm going to start with that. The Giants didn't have any blank screens, Daddy. We no. were all there to boo our picks. Well, that's when the te technology was working. After that, I guess it ran uh, out. Anyway, guys, thanks for bearing with us through our little mini rant. Uh, American football. I don't even know the why. The Chargers drafted great, by the way. but They did. They did a great job. I was actually uh, surprised. Um, but in any so event, man – yeah, so let's get into this film because we, I think, it, I think it was me and Jody reacted to the trailer of Rang Di Basanti months ago, and it was a trailer that ended up not being an official trailer; it was a fan made trailer, and it kind of gave a little too much. And so I was able to predict what the movie was about just from the trailer. And some of the people in the comments were like, "Did he just predict the entire movie?" But found out it was a fan made trailer. And then some of our um, loyal audience members, I think Arjit was the first one and a few others, they said, if you're going to watch this movie, check out The Legend of Bhagat Singh first because it's going to give you a lot of context for the movie. So we have seen Rang to Basanti, but we're going to talk about Legend of Bagger or <laughs> Legend of Bagger Vance, The Legend of Bhagat Singh first because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of history involved. This is a film that came out in 2002. And I don't know about you, but it, I knew AJ Devine Devine was in this film. He um, was in Drishyam and he's in the Singham films and whatnot. I knew he was in this film, but it I did not realize that was him when we transitioned from younger Bagat Singh to older Bagat Singh and he's doing the, the dance on the stage. Right. I did not recognize that as him. And I think it was just the beard um, because once a certain part of the movie comes on, goes on and he shaves the beard and he takes off um his uh his sick um clothing then we were able i was like okay there's aj right there but to me that that was just weird was, i'm starting a random place but let's get into this film this is a film based on the real lives of these revolutionaries these rebels if you will during the 1920s 1930s when india is still under english control and these men and women but mostly men they began or they started working in this revolutionary group to make change happen. And if we can relate it to American history just for a second, you have two historical figures in the civil rights fight. You had Martin Luther King and you had Malcolm X. Martin Luther King was all about nonviolence. 
and Malcolm X was, I'm not going to say he was all about violence, but he was not afraid to use those um, extreme measures if necessary. By any weapon. means necessary. There that was the, that was the yeah. slogan, man. By any means necessary. Now, and I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying. I did not, I did, I personally do not think that Malcolm X was an overly violent person. I believe he was a passionate person who was sick and tired of what he saw in his country for how um, people that, you know, of the same race as him were being treated. And so he had a different philosophy. So transition that to India during these, um, before they became an independent country, you had people like Bhagat Singh who were similar to Malcolm X. Um, as far as by any means necessary. And then you have Gandhi, who's similar to Martin Luther King as far as the peaceful movement. And right. so Gandhi, very influential figure, even in the 1920s, 1930s, he's doing his thing. And Bhagat Singh, you see early in the movie, he is a fan of Gandhi because he hears Gandhi say, we are going to gain independence and we are going to boycott and we are going to do this and do that. And we are not going to take it anymore. And he get as a kid, he gets super excited about it. He has that fire built with him very, very young. And then he sees, this is how it's portrayed in the movie, Gandhi pull back on that. And almost as if he's like, well, maybe we're not ready for that because it's causing other issues because some Indians were getting um, persecuted and were being killed because they were following what Gandhi was saying. And so he pulled back and said, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. And right there, Bhagat Singh is like, what is this? We need to do what we need to do because we cannot allow this stuff to happen. And they showed this horrible, tragic thing that history shows happened where you had all these people in this like town center and you have these British officers and military or police officers, wherever they were coming in and just shooting all of them down because they did not agree with what they were doing. Um, I didn't get the full idea of why they were so angry at them. Um, but you know, just those kind of slaughters that got seeing, he couldn't take it anymore. And so we have this movie about him going on with his life and his friends and his comrades that he meets trying to fight that fight of gaining freedom and stopping this oppression. Now, I have a quick question. First, how – the way they – at least I interpreted that scene, but God Singh was actually there, right, when everybody was being ex executed. I believe so, yeah. There how was, did he survive that? There man? was a great emotional musical number there to where, like, he's walking through and seeing things happen – and so I'm assuming he was there somewhere, but in the in the music video as a part of the movie, he's obviously walking around. So that was kind of confusing. Like, was he there? Did he hear about it? And was he just imagining himself there? That I'm not 100 percent sure. Let us know in the comments if we're interpreting that incorrectly, because if I'm sure there were other people who survived it, who were just maybe just um, wounded, but not mortally wounded. But he walked out without a scratch. That in and of itself it is divine intervention. And I only bring that up because it's said in this movie that he's an atheist. Right. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in, in, in religion. So. To me, that just is like, well, that God was looking out for you that day because if he was there, how did he survive without a scratch? But um, with that being said, again, yeah, you're right. Socialist revolutionaries. And at first, you know, much like uh, Malcolm X, you know, he agreed with uh, uh, Martin Luther King. OK, he wanted to see um, that vision that Muhammad Gandhi did. But when change didn't happen so fast enough, and when he felt like they were pulling back, he, in his heart, he felt like, no, we got to move forward. And that's where the two camps kind of split, okay? Now, I will say this. Maybe it was just the director. I do not know. I am not versed in uh, uh, um, Indian history enough or in Mahatma Gandhi's um history enough. I know that he's an influential leader. He led, just like Malcolm, Malcolm, Martin Luther King, he led a peaceful revolution, which is actually where Martin Luther King got the idea of doing it from. But they kind of made a scene here, like you said, like, yeah, like he pulled back and several times where he could have intervened to try to speak up on behalf of Bhagat Singh and other people. He didn't do so because it might have caused friction. You know what I mean? So there were a couple things where I thought that the director, Raj uh, Rock Kumar Shonshati made some bold choices because it almost painted Mahatma Gandhi in a bad light at times. And I'm like, whoa, that's really, 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 really uh, 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 brave. 
whether it's true or not, that's still brave to put in the film because there's going to be some people that are obviously going to feel some way about it, okay? Um, later on in history, you know, when uh, Malcolm X's film came out, Denzel Washington did an amazing part of it. But you cannot have that film without first showing that Malcolm X was a criminal, Malcolm Little at first, showing that he was a drug dealer and he had a white uh, a, a prostitute girlfriend and, and all these things. And people got upset, like, why are you showing this about Malcolm? Well, it's true. It's part of his history. So, and, at the, and Spike Lee directed it and he got a lot of flack for that. You know what I mean? So I'm wondering if this director got any flack for presenting uh, um, Mahatma Gandhi and not the most flattering uh, um, image. Does that make sense? Yeah. And me and you both will not claim whatsoever to know a lot of the history of Gandhi. Um, the only thing I know is basically the impressions that we as Americans get as we learn about him very little in history in school. And growing up, my impression was that he was like a Mother Teresa type character, that he was just such a nice guy and a great leader. And he he saved India and all these kind of things that that was my impression growing up after starting this channel. I can't remember what video it was, but the idea came got brought up and there was some very passionate viewers who were saying very respectfully, but very passionate viewers that were kind of sharing some of their opinions of Gandhi. And I, I want to say that. Um, it was Bose who assassinated Gandhi. There are a lot of viewers of ours that um, understand Bose's side of things. They understand Bhagat Singh's side of things. And it's not the same um, opinion as we had growing up. So what I want to do for myself is just try to avoid any kind of confusion. Me and Gabe are not taking anyone's political side in this in the history because we just don't know enough about it. We're just saying, like, and Gabe said it beautifully, what we notice in this movie. And, you know, I'm sure one day I will do some more history on learning about Gandhi and whatnot. But it did. The thing I appreciated about um, what they did in this movie in a lot of aspects is, first of all, they found a lot of they, they made their characters look very similar to the historical photos of these um, yes. people. I mean, Gandhi, it wasn't played by Ben Kingsley like in the 1980 film, but he looked very much like what we see in pictures of Gandhi. The Bhagat Singh, I mean, they did a great job of paying attention to that history. So I can only imagine that with the whole Gandhi aspect, and I'm the same with you, I was like, whoa, really? I can see someone in Gandhi's place making some of those decisions because he is full force on the, the nonviolence, on the peaceful movement. And if he makes a decision that causes people to get hurt, he's going to back off on that. If he sees someone like Bhagat Singh, who's willing to go a different route, he's not going to support that person, even right. though you would think the idea would be let's get India free. So right. it's it's muddied waters, basically, to try to understand. But I, this film, when I watched it, I don't know if it's 100% historically based, but – I truly enjoyed watching almost every moment of this film because it seemed like a historical documentary almost, even though it was a movie, because there, there was just so much history embedded. There were so many characters there. The performances, these actors seemed like they gave just a little more effort to portray these characters in this way. And then you find out at the end of the movie that these guys that ended up um, you know, putting their lives on the line – they got singing his two friends. They're only 23 years old. Like they were able to accomplish all of that in less than 24 years is just astronomically unbelievable. Now, I mean, this is came out in 2002. So let's try to give a little uh, uh, context of the film. And, um, like you, you like you mentioned, Bhagat Singh first was a fan of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Then he broke off. You know, he's with the Socialist Revolution. They're upset because of the inhumane treatment of Indians by the British, and they're fighting for the liberation of uh, of India. Now they're not. Vi I mean, they're violent, but only to fight back. And there's a very interesting scene when they're playing, I think it's some kind of game and the English are playing cricket and the ball goes over. And he says, I told you yesterday, if it comes over again, you're not going to get it. So the English grab sticks like they're ready to fight. So they're like, okay, they grab their sticks ready to fight. They made the choice not to, and we're talking about Bhagat Singh and his friends made the choice to not to strike first, but they weren't going to be, uh, uh, um, 
victims either. They took up arms. Like if they swing, we're swinging. And it just sh- taught you his mentality or his philosophy. It wasn't that he necessarily liked violence or embraced it, but he was not going to sit back and be a victim either. So that was a very, very interesting part uh, of the way they tell a the story. Anyway, fast forward, they're protesting, they're fighting, they're doing things to make sure that, um, that that the that India eventually gains independence, and then one of the leaders, one of their leaders, because at this time, Bhagat Singh is not even a leader. One of their leaders, Lala, is killed, right? And he's beat down or whatever by these English officers. He ends up dying. He was an older gentleman, and that's when Bhagat Singh becomes extreme. But you can see it was just as a reaction. Like if they're willing to kill one of our elders, one of our leaders, then they have no boundaries. Why should we? My point is everything he did was a reaction. At least that's how the film does. And in, in other words, it's self-defense. They, if, they, they, if they're not going to stop at, at killing women and children, at, ki- at killing political leaders and figures, why should we think that they are, they're going to negotiate unless we force their hands? And the way to force their hands is with violence, okay? Violence begets more violence I, 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 is the same, but at some point, you know what I mean? The turn the other cheek, okay, I only have so many cheeks. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I like that part of it. So after they kill Lala, that's when he becomes very, very extreme. Um, he even goes to the chamber when the when the when they're holding a meeting, right? And he drove, throws bombs. It's very interesting to note, though, he intentionally throws them in open areas as to not kill anyone because he's not even trying to kill anyone. But he is using violence. He's escalated because he sees that's what the English respond to. And I think the most powerful uh, uh, line that he delivered in the entire film was AJ's running, right? They're all running because they're being per, um, pursued by Indian police, by their own, because obviously they're under the thumb of the British government. And this one officer corners him, and then they end up like basically in a Mexican standoff with guns drawn on each other. And he says, I have no desire to, sp- to, to, to shed Indian blood. I don't want to take an Indian life. You know what I mean? So it's like, Look, we're we're the same. We're you know I'm fighting for you basically. It wasn't like he was just employing violence for the sake of violence. It's my point. You know what I mean? But I think that was the most powerful line he delivered. AJ was amazing in that scene. And um, then after that, after the bombing, they got to go into hiding because now everybody's looking for. Oh no no, it's not after the bombing. It's after the other incident. I'll let you talk about that one. Well, before we get there, I just want to backtrack a little bit because as I'm watching this film, um. You know, you, you always want to get behind the main characters. You want to sympathize and understand. And it was hard for me for a little bit when he starts to be a revolutionary. It was hard for me to get behind him at first because he was going the more extreme route. Even when you say he got more extreme later on with the bombs and whatnot, even before that, he was still pretty extreme, robbing the, the trains to be able to get money and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I, I can't be a hypocrite. As, as a movie watcher, I'm just speaking about a movie watcher. I'm not talking about morals or anything like that. I'm talking about a movie watcher. I can't be a hypocrite and root for the good guys in other movies, but then root for this guy just because he's the main character when he's stealing from people, when he's willing to kill and get revenge for the older gentleman that gets killed, when he's willing – when he says, I want to learn how to make bombs, I'm just like, this This is terrorist territory. This is not good. This is – what like not what am I watching, but how can I root for this guy even though – but God Singh, and they mentioned it many times that he's very good with his words and he's very um, convincing with his words. But as I watch the movie, you begin to understand the full picture. And I, again, I don't know if it makes me a hypocrite. I don't really care because I end up understanding and sympathizing with this character because, like you said, first of all, he did not want to hurt anybody. He did not want to hurt anyone that was innocent. He didn't want to hurt Indians, but he didn't want to go out of his way and even hurt the British. When he drops that bomb, he specifically put it in one spot where no one would get hurt. And he realized that bombs and guns and all this kind of stuff is what was going to get the attention of these people. And he follows a, a, a simple or a, a pattern throughout the movie where he's willing to go as far as he needs to to get the job done but when he gets the job done, then he doesn't need to go any farther. When he um, when he does his little sacrifices in the jail, he's doing that not for personal gratification, not for ego. He's doing that solely because he knows eventually it's going to help out his Indian brother and sisters. And that was something 
that I found myself getting behind that character, even though it'd be easy to say, oh, he's a terrorist, not a revolutionary. He wasn't a terrorist. And they mentioned it in the movie. He said, I'm not here just to hurt innocent people. I am here to make things right that were once wrong. And in his way, the British, certain British officers are killing all of my people for no reason whatsoever. I can't allow that to happen. And it was almost as if he had the idea that if I, if I don't do something extreme, it's going to keep happening and their blood's going to be on my hands. But he said early on, even when he was arranged to marry that very beautiful girl, and I thought eventually he was going to marry her. He never did. He said, this is the life I have. I'm going to live is going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard for you as my wife. And she's like, oh, I can do it. I can do it. He's like, no. He's like, I'm not going to live very long. I'm not going to live a regular life. I'm going to live a very hard life and I am totally okay with it. And throughout the whole film, when he's going through all of this, he is so at peace and he is so okay with who he is that it just, it was a very interesting, complex character. One that I had never rooted for before in film before. No, I, I definitely agree. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, um, We kind of, well, no, we'll talk about that at the end because uh, 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 the the way the director set something up was absolutely beautiful for somebody who had, didn't know the story and didn't know the history behind it. But let's let, let let's get through the rest of the story. Um, they have a plan to kill the officer, the senior police officer that ordered Lala's killing, basically. And mistakenly, they end up killing another police officer, some kid that was young as well that wasn't in, and now they have to go on the run. And that's when you're talking about now that he basically has to change his appearance, shaves the beard, well, and now cool. it looks now it looks like AJ. So they go on the run, but they're sold out. And the worst part about it is that they're sold out by their own people. And sometimes you see that where you get sold out by your own when you're fighting for them, it's like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's so frustrating. But they end up going to jail. And that's when you talk about him making the sacrifices. He sees that even in jail, the treatment isn't humane because the white prisoners have newspapers to read. They're sipping on tea. They have great accommodations and eating good food where they're basically in a pig slop. They're eating food that's not even meant for animals to eat so he refuses to eat and he goes on a hunger strike i think it was like a 63 day hunger strike you know everybody else goes on a hunger strike and he does it because he knows they're trying to force feed him milk he refuses to eat but he knows that he has to take extreme measures in order to get people to pay attention and you hear how in the papers this this hunger strike starts um uh, um, going around town, even the English uh, elite that are in town, the women that are at the party start hearing about this. Amanda and Eve for 63 days. What kind of harsh conditions could somebody could, could they be facing that he was putting himself through this? And now you see how that sacrifice is starting to make a change. It's that start was, that part was so tough to watch where he was because I was, you know, you put yourself in these characters' shoes when you watch these movies. And just to think, like, I, I can't go a day without eating. Um, I think I'm sure I've probably done it before, but your, your stomach starts to hurt and it's all mental or whatever. It, it was tough to see him and all his comrades going through that. It was awesome to see how they were behind him. It reminded me of Kasari, a film where all these six soldiers, they all decide to not eat. Um, it's like a punishment to them. But then the leader that punished them with that punishment, he himself goes on that hunger strike as well. It was it was quite impressive to see, but it was so hard to watch. And it was it was cool how... He before he throws a bomb, he's like, we're not going to try to get away from it. We are going to get arrested. That's going to be part of our story. And that's going to be how we're going to be able to tell our story and get the word out. Because right now we're not making enough of an impact. We right. need to make a bigger impact. I mean, that was his entire thing was right. making an impact, making a revolution. Um, they want to go to court. And every time they're in court, he's using that as a platform to tell everybody about the plight uh, of the Indian because of the British and how it's injustice. I mean, it was an amazing overall film. You know, one nitpick I have talking about the the starvation and the 63 days, the one guy when he's about to break, when he's holding the, I don't know. I've never been in that, in that predicament. He was ill. He was the hungriest of them all. He was malnourished. But I thought his performance was way over the top there when he's holding the jug of milk and then he like throws it on the ground. Like, I know I won't drink it. And it didn't bother me that much, but I was just like, 
man, if it's 63 days and he's that ill, he might not even been able to get out of bed, let alone, you know what I mean? Like he's got a fever. That's why they were asking for water. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But, um, you know, come to find out, like you mentioned, these guys are just kids and we find out their ages towards the end. I remember with that guy, he had like the Cajun spice or something like that. The cayenne pepper they put down his throat. I mean, he was seriously in some pain. Right, 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 right. They gave him some serious nourishment. Or he wanted water and they gave him milk and milk, yeah. right, right. And he actually ends up dying, right? It's him that ends up dying in, in, in the jail. One of them do. I, I the strike. Right. Yeah, someone does for so sure. So finally the hunger strike works, and you see that there's change. And then uh actually Mahatma Gandhi's like close advisor says, Hey, a lot of people now support Bhagat Singh, and a lot of our young um contemporaries are uh, um B- buying his message so maybe it's time that we start embracing them as well and you see that Mahatma Gandhi thinks about it and even goes and asks and pleads for their life but the captain the, the British officer is like no that can't happen you know what I mean these guys are killed a British officer and, you know they're going to pay with their lives so like you said this entire time he's at peace and basically, the be- what I was talking about earlier was at the beginning of the movie it opens up with everybody uh, uh the entire town, it seems like, is in front of this jail, and they got the picture, the famous picture of God Singh on big uh, uh, um, posters, and they're all yelling, and there's like uh, uh, pitchforks out there, and they're like, free Bhagat Singh, long live Bhagat Singh, free Bhagat Singh. So you figure like, okay, they're going to eventually let him go. Fast forward now to the end of the film, and I'll let you take it away from there. The end of the film was like, I couldn't believe it. It was an emotional gut punch. And I think that that's yeah. one of the good things about walking to the movie like this blind, not having the history behind it. So you got the end of the film here where they're in prison. They're basically on death row, we would call it. And there, there is no justice for them. I mean, maybe Begat Singh would say otherwise, that he did get justice. He got exactly what he wanted. But they go, him and his two friends, um, they go and they walk to get hung and they get executed. And there's no there's nobody with a bow and arrow chopping down the net or the rope to save them from being hung. They they die and they become martyrs. And it's exactly what those three individuals wanted. They not not saying that they wanted to die when they died, but they wanted to go out and make a statement. And they're smiling and they're hugging and they have no worries or no qualms about it. They're just there and they're completely at peace. And they're they're following the leadership and they believe in the leadership of Begat Singh. But Begat Singh, he it's almost as if he knew that it was going to happen eventually at some point in his life. And he was just every day he was living, he was trying to buy another day to be able to get his message out. And even though he went about it in a way where me personally, I would not hunger strike. Sorry, I can't. I'm too selfish. Um, revolutionary and killing people for revenge. I, I can't do that. I completely respect the decisions he made because they're not easy decisions to make. And I'm not sure how history goes if, you know, his impression and his decisions made a huge impact for India to eventually get um, independence. And I'm not sure which film I saw it in, but there was a film, either this one or Rang de Basanti, where they talk about how, you know, it's no good to get independence for India when you have Indian officials in the government now corrupt and taking advantage of the Indian man and woman. And sure. that's what he wanted to avoid. He wanted to build a, a systematic India that can run on its own and is for the people, not just a corrupt person, whether they're Indian or British. Um, it, it was a very powerful movie. And it's I've only seen a few performances by AJ. It's my favorite performance of his. He definitely embodied that character, that person, As much as Daniel Day-Lewis embodied Lincoln in that movie, he transformed into that character. And I I absolutely love this movie. From seeing the the little poster for it and the hat and the mustache, I'm like, what kind of movie is this? This movie was fantastic. AJ did a great job. So did everyone else that performed in it. The courtroom scenes were some of the most interesting scenes where you had the weasel going back and forth and turning on his men. And they were just saying revolution, revolution. And you had the judges kind of confused and the lawyer, even he was outsmarted a few times. There's so many elements of this movie that we did not get to. The friend that was um, enamored by Bagat Singh was kind of their leader who really took his life out in the woods at the end there. 
there was so many interesting characters, so many interesting subplots that were in this film that meshed together so well that I truly, truly enjoy this movie very much. And for my grade, I'm going to go ahead and give this movie an A plus because it has the history factor, which is a huge plus for me. It had great acting. It told a great story. It seemed like they've tried to follow history. Again, we don't know the history well enough to know if they did. And they painted this character. It, it could have gone bad in so many different ways. If it wasn't done right. But they did it in a way where I feel like it did justice to the original Bagat Singh person. Yeah, you know, like I said, I only found one piece that was like took me out of the performance. But other than that, I thought it was a masterful performance. The director, like I said, was brave even to, to tackle this biopic and maybe some controversial subjects that other people wouldn't tackle because, come on, at least not in American film, you're not going to say that that Gandhi was flawed in any which way. What are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? The backlash you're going to face. So I, I think the director was very brave and AJ put on a masterful performance. Like I said, it was one of those films where at the end you were kind of like, oh, you were deflated. like. Because we didn't know. We didn't, we walked in not knowing that, no, these guys were martyrs. They actually died at 23 years old. So so you see them go through this struggle, only to still end up being hung. And you're like, oh, but it stayed with you emotionally. You know what I mean? So for that reason, I've got to give it an A plus. I agree with you, Nick. And I think that, you know, I'm glad we watched this first because it's going to give us some context for, for the other films moving forward. Um, what I will say though, it's very important to watch, uh, these films or at least watch our review of these films through our prism of Americans not having any background knowledge. So if the biopic took some liberties that aren't true, we don't know that. Okay. Whether it be about Bhagat Singh or about Gan, we don't know. That's not, uh, we're just examining this as a film and as a film is very, very possible, you know, uh, Gandhi was a man at the end of the day. So was he flawed? Of course, all men are flawed. Okay. Uh, uh, it, uh, uh, um, but God saying, I'm sure uh, obviously was flawed. We all are flawed. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Mother Teresa was flawed. Okay. Let's just put it that way. Okay. But what we're saying is that, that if we, if the movies take an interpretation that you don't agree with, then that's the director who did that. And we're agreeing with the director's vision because we don't know any different. We don't have any context to put it in. We're just like, wow, this was a great film. So I just thought it was important to mention that. You know what I mean? Because again, they can't Very like important. the the director. Like I said, when I saw I saw this, and Savannah was watching it with me, she was like, "Hey, Gandhi, that's who Martin Luther Martin Luther King, you know, got the nonviolent movement from." What are you? They're bad mouthing Gandhi? What are you kidding me? I was like, I, babe, I don't know. Let's watch the film and let's get through it to figure out exactly what's going on. So if that's just a uh, average American taking it that way, I could see how someone who is an Indian person and is very, very passionate about Mahatma Gandhi may feel about this film and the light they portrayed him in. I, I could be wrong, but I get the impression that not every Indian feels the way about Gandhi as we do about Martin Luther King. I could be wrong on that. The comment section can let me know. Um, talking about historical figures, I mean, every historical figure that we look up to and um, maybe some people worship for crying out loud, they are flawed. They have many, many mistakes. And I remember watching the movie Selma, which is about Martin Luther King mm -hmm. and a part of his life. And they showed him as very flawed, having infidelities. Mm -hmm. and making bad decisions and this or that and i'm like that's not the martin luther king that i learned about my entire life he could do and no wrong you learn about the the fail the frailties of these people and their mistakes and do you remember the backlash that the movie got from the NAACP? Oh, this is propaganda, blah, 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 this is that. The director got destroyed, even though it got nominated for like an Oscar and all kinds of awards. It was a great film. But come to find out, you know, people in Martin's family, there was actually FBI, which why is the FBI bugging Martin Luther King's hotel room? Comes out with tapes that, yeah, he was uh, uh, unfaithful to his wife and he did have these indiscretions or whatever. But People were angry when it came up. That's what I'm saying. You talk about his. It, it blew my mind because he's one of my one of my top two historical figures for crying out loud. Um, I love studying the life of Martin Luther King, and I had never. You're good. You're good. I had never. 
Whoa. Do I stay in it? Hopefully, he can come back in it. Yes. Yeah, def I can heal your. Definitely stay in there. Don't end it. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Every time I hit a little cord, it does that. It's driving me crazy. But my whole point was, I mean, it just it surprised me. But it makes sense. No one's perfect. If they want to put a telescope in my life, they're going to realize that I'm not perfect either. Um, I haven't had made those kind of mistakes, <laughs> but I'm just saying I'm not perfect. But that's our review for this film. I have a feeling that we're going to get a lot of comments in the comment section, and that's fine. I feel like we have approached this film – um, as carefully, but as honestly as possible. So hopefully anyone that maybe didn't like some of the comments we made, you understand where we're coming from. We, we both love this film very much, are excited to talk to or talk to each other and review Rain de Basanti in a few days. If you liked our review, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and check out some other reviews that we have. But we hope you're staying safe and you're staying healthy. Until next time. We know all things.